Good afternoon and welcome from a beautiful Bob Copeland Field here at Rochester High School and tonight's TRC matchup with the Rochester Zebras hosting the Apaches from Wabash. So we get, Should we do the lineups first here yeah, for this let's, game? let's go ahead. They're getting some starting lineups. All right, Wabash comes in with a record of 13-4. and four. They're 5-0 oh in the TRC. Here's their lineup for tonight's game. Leading off is the catcher, Andrew Dillon. Batting second is left fielder, Jason Tate. Batting third is the pitcher, Chayden Beeks. Batting cleanup is center fielder, Justin Booth. Batting fifth is the shortstop, Keaton Fields. Jared Brooks will bat sixth and play second base. Colton Learned will bat seventh and play first base. Blake Smith is their DH. He'll at eighth. Trevor Daughtry is their sophomore third baseman. He'll bat ninth. The flex player is right fielder Ashton Smith. For Rochester, Rochester comes in 11 and three overall. They are four and one in the TRC. Here's their lineup: leading off and playing shortstop is Tarek McLaughlin. Uh, batting second, we have Ethan Medina. He's playing center fielder. He's playing center field. Tanner Reiners will at third and play third base. Jake Seifer is the cleanup hitter. He's the catcher. Braden Zink will at fifth and play second base. Evan Elliott is the right fielder. He'll bat sixth. Batting seventh is first baseman Luke Hunting. Batting eighth is the DH, Gavin Young. Batting ninth is the left fielder, Colton Faverda. The flex player is the pitcher, Aaron Huffman. Again, Rochester, Wabash comes in leading the TRC at 5-0. and Rochester's 4-1. and North Miami, all three Miami County teams are 3-2. and mm-hmm. North Miami, McConaughey, and Peru. Manchester and Northfield are 2-3. and Valley is 1-3. and Southwood is 1-4. and Whitco is 0 and 4. The other games in the TRC today uh, Wabash at Rochester, the game we're going to have here. Tippecanoe New Valley is at McConaughey. North Miami is at Northfield. Manchester is at Peru. And Southwood is at Whitco. That's the softball and baseball schedule for today. And again, these two teams will play in the sectional quarterfinals at Wabash. Uh, we think that's going to be on Wednesday, May 25th. We don't have a day, an exact day and time yet, but that'll be the uh, first game in the sectional, correct? Yeah, just don't know the time. Batting eight, for Hunter Campbell, number ten, Gavin Young. And batting ninth, playing left field, number seven, Colton Fervida. Raymond's down. <laughs> Good to see Colton Fervid out there. He he um, dove on the warning track against Warsaw on Saturday and caused a gash on his eyebrow and needed some stitches to fix that. All right, going to get the national anthem. Wabash is 4-0 in the month of May. Rochester's 1-2 so far this month. And if there's one word that could be used to describe the Wabash Apaches, that word would be speed. Wabash's team batting average is 273 as compared to Rochester's 307. But it's the stolen bases that really stand out. Wabash has 78 stolen bases in 17 games. Wow. 
That's about five a game. <laughs> That's solid, yeah. Rochester, had, by comparison, has 50 stolen bases in 14 games. I wouldn't say Rochester's a bunch of slow pokes. Mm-hmm. But this is a Wabash team. They're, they're not, they, can't, they can't sit around and wait for home runs with the way their ballpark is at Chris Root Field. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. They have hit, they have hit zero home runs on the season. Yeah. None. They only have two triples. This is a team that they've scored 114 runs in 17 games. So not a good offense, not an overwhelming offense. Rochester scored 104 runs in 14 games. But and this is a team that's going to test Jake Seifer behind the plate. They're going to try and run. On, you know, some teams where it's like, yeah, you don't, uh, maybe we're not going to run on this catcher or this pitcher. Wabash well, is going to run on, any, on everybody. They're going to they're going to make you throw them out before they get two. <laughs> Before they get, uh, I don't know, nervous or before they stop running. Before they get too hesitant on the bases, I guess you'd say. Again, another thing that Wabash does well is they pitch well. 3.10 ERA. That's very, very good. Beeks is 3-1 and one with 1.75 ERA. He's, Beeks has pitched 28 innings. They're, he is second on their team in innings. They're... they're uh, their leader in innings pitch is this guy at the plate, Andrew Dillon. He's pitched 30 in the third innings. He's their catcher today, and he is leading off. Dillon is a junior, 265 hitter. Swings at Huffman's first pitch and fouls it off, and we're underway at Bob Copeland Field. 12 RBIs for Dillon. And this is, you know, they, they graduated a lot of kids last year. They had a pretty productive class. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we, I mean, I guess you always expect Coach Holly, you know, Jack Holly's ball club to be a good team, but I'm sure 5-0 in the TRC was what we expected. 1-1 one one the count. Pitch by Huffman. High ball two. Rochester used five pitchers in that game against Warsaw. On Saturday... Breaking ball high, ball three. Inside, Dylan leads off the game with the base on balls. That's Dylan's 13th walk on the year. He leads the team in walks, and that'll bring up the sophomore left fielder, Jason Tate. Tate is hitting 250, three RBIs on the year. He's 11 for 44. Well, let's see how much attention Huffman pays to this base runner. Bun attempt foul. Dylan has nine stolen bases on the year. He's nine for ten. The, their team leader in stolen bases is Brooks. He is their number six batter. He's got 19 stolen bases. Throw over hunting as him. Runner up the middle, base hit for Tate. Dylan moves up to second. First and second, nobody out. And that'll bring up the senior pitcher, Chaden Beeks. Beeks is a 356 hitter. Ten RBIs on the year for Beeks. A good start here for the Apaches. You can see why they're 5 0 in the conference. First two batters on base. Huffman. First pitch breaking balls in there. That was a good one. I was at that game against Valley when they pulled off a double steal in the bottom of the seventh. Foul ball, 0-2.
think they're uh, having some trouble getting on the same page there as Jake goes out and talks to Aaron. I think so. O2 to Beeks. They're back to second. Ball's not caught by Zink. It was a nice pick move there by Huffman. It's one of the things when you got a team that's so aggressive on the bases like Wabash is, you got to make sure and keep them honest. Fastball high, one and two. Like a slider high. Two and two. Aaron, to Aaron told me he, th he throws a cutter, which he he, he says is kind of half a fastball, half a slider. Hmm. Two and two. Grounder. Six, four. And the throw gets away, and here comes Dylan in to score. Only a force out. E4, fielder's choice 6-4 and an E4. Tate is out. Beak still at first. Dylan scores on the air. Wabash leads one to nothing. Runner at first, one out. The batter is Justin Booth. He is their junior center fielder. Is there a courtesy runner in for the pitcher? No, he's running for himself. Yep. Booth, 265 hitter. He is 13 for 49. He has seven RBIs. Beeks leaves their team in extra base hits with eight. Booth has six extra base hits, five doubles and a triple. Pitch is low and away. There goes Beeks, and he's going to steal it. He got a really good jump. He got a good jump and uh, not a uh, good throw there by Cypher. Now they're going to get a pinch run, a courtesy runner. So he steals a base, and then they're going to give him a courtesy runner. That is uh, Ice. E-I-S is the pinch runner. Courtesy runner. Courtesy runner, I need to say. Pitch is high. Two and one. Wabash has four losses to Mississinawa, Oak Hill, Eastbrook, and Fort Wayne Lures. Foul off. The Eastbrook game is the second game of a doubleheader. The Mississinawa game was their second game of the year, and the Oak Hill game was their third game of the year. So they were one and two, and they've gone 12 and two since. The Fort Wayne Lures game was at a tournament back on April 30th. They lost to Lures, but they also beat LaPel that day. Popped up. Foul. Playable for Cypher. Got it. Ice will hold. So Booth fouls out. Look at you. Two outs, runner at second. The batter, sh the sophomore shortstop, Keaton Fields. Fields is a 306 batter. He has eight RBIs. 11 for 36, and 10 singles and a double. Pitches outside with Heater. One and zero. Strike called with a breaking ball. See, so, yeah, I think we've seen Huffman throw both a throw a fastball and a curve and a cutter all this inning. 
Fastball high, two and one. And Aaron Huffman and Tarek McLaughlin playing that Great Lakes Canes travel team together. Pitch is high. Ball three. This is the first time these two teams have played since last year's sectional. Zebras won that one 9-7 at Chris Root Field. Strike. That was in the sectional semifinals. On that Saturday, this year, they'll meet, this year they drew each other and will meet in the quarterfinals. And Huffman was one of the heroes in that game when he came in in relief. They needed innings from him in that game, and he delivered. Got him looking with a fastball. So for Wabash, in the top of the first, they score a run on a hit. There was one error and one left at the end of half an inning. Wabash leads Rochester 1-0, and you're watching RTC, RTC TV4. Wabash gets one in the top of the first. But, uh, it could have been worse foul. I think the uh, Zebras did a nice job of settling in. The Apaches got the first two batters on base, and Rochester able to kind of limit the damage. Uh, the one thing that I've noticed over the last few games for Rochester with the uh, uh, one and one and three in the last four was uh, they've they've kind of struggled putting some uh, runs across. Seems like they've been getting uh, you know runners on base, but getting them yeah. home has been the trick. Yeah, I agree. I, it hasn't been like lack of base runners. It's just kind of yeah, getting them in, and it, it just seems like they've been playing a lot of one base at a time. You know, they they were down four to nothing against Warsaw after two innings. They came back to tie that game. But then, you know, I think part of it, too, is that, and again, it's not a lack of contact either. It's just kind of, they hit the ball on the ground a lot, and it's just hard to muster a lot of big innings when you're hitting the ball on the ground a lot. We've got uh, some lineup adjustments here. Val's scribbling those in, but... Uh, okay, I think we are, I think we are good now. Now batting number two, Tarek McLaughlin. Ethan Medina was listed in the lineup at the start of this game. He's not in there now. We believe he suffered an injury at some point. So it'll be Tarek McLaughlin, Braden Zink, and Tanner Reinhardt due for Rochester here in the bottom of the first. As this ACDC concert breaks up as a baseball <laughs> game resumes. Yeah, I think he uh, tweaked his ankle maybe yeah. uh, during warm-ups. Yeah. So. Mc McLaughlin, Zink, and Reinhardt the top three. Cypher, Elliott, Hunting the middle three. Huffman, Young, Favre to the bottom three. Huffman was flexed out in the original lineup. He's now batting. And McLaughlin swings at the first pitch from Beeks and pops to short, and it is caught by Fields. One up, one down. Now batting number 11, Braden Z. Hunter Campbell was not in the original lineup. He's now in the right field, but he's the flex player. Hunter had to leave the game with a migraine against Warsaw, and apparently it was... He was not feeling well. so he, But he is in there today, but he's not batting. First pitch is high to zinc. Fastball high. You know, this is interesting. This is the fourth straight Wabash County team that Rochester's faced, and I don't think any of them have had a hard-throwing pitcher. Beeks is kind of in that mode. He's got kind of a nice polish to him. He's got a little herky-jerkiness to his game. Throws a nice breaking ball, and he is... You know, Dylan's probably their number one, but he's kind of, I, I wouldn't even call him a number two. I'd call him a 1A. He's pitched a lot of big innings and big games for them. Ball three. Braden Zink comes in hitting 265. He is nine for 34. Four RBIs in the year for Braden. He has one extra base hit, a double. Strike. Looks like inside corner, inside half. Count is three and two. Beeks as a 1.75 ERA in the year. Popped up. Foul. Out of play. And the count stays 3-2. and two. Well, 
Whoa. Up and in. That's a base on balls. Runner at first with one out. And that'll bring up the freshman third baseman, Tanner Reinhartz. Tanner hitting 391. 15 RBIs in the year. Strike inside corner. Boy, I hope Ethan Medina is doing all right. He's just a key part of this team. And hopefully it's nothing too long term. Yeah, he's he's done a little bit of everything for this team this year and if he's out for any length of time it's going to hurt the zebras for sure. Yeah, and just ideal for that two spot in that batting order too because he's he knows how to handle the bat and he can just do about anything you need from a from that spot in the order. I mean Ethan's 367 hitter and he, you don't like not being able to write his name in the lineup. 1 and 2 to Tanner Reinerts. Senior pitching to a freshman. Grounder, shortstop. Six, four, and this double play, they turn. Yeah, we talked about it. It's not lack of contact. It's just hitting the ball on the ground a lot, and they did it there. Mm -hmm. For Rochester in the bottom of the first, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left at the end of one inning. Wabash leads Rochester one to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV four. Back here at Bob Copeland Field after one, Wabash leads one zero over the Zebras, and a nice double play there to end the bottom of the first, uh, turned by the Apaches, and it's going to be up to the uh, Zebras defense here, see what they can do in the bottom or the top of the second. Rochester hosts McConaughey on Wednesday, and then John Glenn comes here on Friday. John Glenn's ranked number 10 in Class 3A. Yeah, and then he has uh, one loss on the season. Yep, and then the Zebras head to Winnemac against a good Winnemac team on Saturday. Winnemac leads the Hoosier North, and the Hoosier North is just a wild, crazy conference, kind of like we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Winnemac is 8-1, and one, North Judson is 8-2, and two, Caston is 7-2, and two, and Pioneer 6-2. and two. Yeah. Caston swept a doubleheader from North Judson on Saturday. North Judson was 8-0, now they're 8-2. Caston swept great Judson. Great job by Caston. Wow. 7-5 in game one, 7-3 in game two. And the Comets are right in it. And that sets up a huge ball game tomorrow, Pioneer at Caston. Mm -hmm. That'll be at 5 o'clock. And then Argus comes in, they'll play Caston at 7 o'clock. So Caston plays twice tomorrow at home. First game against Pioneer, the second game against Argus. Hmm. And then they have uh, they turn around and, and play at Pioneer? No, they've already played at Pioneer, and Caston beat them there about a week ago. The second game was rained out, so it's a makeup. Okay, this is a makeup. Yeah. Pioneer was supposed to play at Valley tomorrow. Fly ball to right. Caught out there by Hunter Campbell, and uh, Jared Brooks is the first man out here in the top of the second. Pioneer was supposed to play at Valley tomorrow. Now they're playing at Caston. Okay. Valley... Once the Pioneer, once Pioneer had to cancel the, that game, mm -hmm. Valley got a game with South Central. It was ranked number four in Class 1A. South okay. Central will be traveling to Valley tomorrow. Okay. I got a feeling we're going to have a little bit of this going on here because there's a lot of teams that are trying to make up conference games over the next two weeks. And Yep. How about the Pioneer softball team? They're playing north wide as we speak right now at Herc Hoffman Field. Fly ball in the right center field, and Elliott can't get it. It's going to go all the way to the wall. should be extra bases. Colton learned has a double. That ball kept slicing away from Elliott. He really didn't have much of a chance at it. Hit it to the fence. Runner at second with one out. So the Pioneer softball team, they're hosting North White now. After that game is over, then Winnemac will come in. They'll play Pioneer at 7.30. Finish the, the game that they started in the snow. <laughs> right. Then Winnemac travels to Caston tomorrow. Yeah. Pioneer plays a very, very good Western team tomorrow. Then Pioneer travels to a really, really good West Central team on Thursday. Okay, then on Friday, <laughs> Pioneer travels to Culver Academy at 5 o'clock. They'll play the Lady Eagles. After that game is over, they'll hop on the bus again and then travel to Newton Park and play LaVille at 8 p.m. The bottom of the fifth. Yeah. 
they they got three outs and they'll they get that game one. That was another game that was conference obviously that uh, was postponed mm -hmm. in the uh, in between the top and bottom of the fifth inning. Yep. First pitch to Blake Smith is fouled off. 0 and 1. Now from uh, back to Pioneer baseball. I mean. They trail. They go to Cast, and then Pioneer plays Judson in their two games set on Thursday and Friday. And uh, they still oh, have oh, one they, with Winnemac, yeah, right? Also, Pioneer has to play. Uh, Pioneer was supposed to play Laville in a doubleheader on Saturday. That got rained out. Right. So Pioneer plays at Laville on Wednesday. Then their two games set with North Judson is Thursday and Friday. So four, four conference games: Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> and Pioneer still has got to play one more with Winnemac. Swing and a miss. And that's next week, the Winnemac game? Yes. Yeah. Jeez. It's just crazy. You know, we knew it was going to happen like this with uh, all the delays and cancellations, but it's just when it gets here, it's just mm -hmm. crazy. Fly ball to left. Faverta measures it, catches it. Two out. Holding on at second is learned. So Blake Smith flies out to left, and that'll bring up their number nine hitter, the sophomore third baseman, Trevor Daughtry. Trevor is a two sixty eight hitter. He's 11 for 41 on the year. He has nine RBIs. He is very, very fast. You have to be prepared for the bunt, and Tanner Reiners looks like he is prepared for the bunt because he's playing in on the grass. And Luke Cunning's kind of playing in, too. First pitch, breaking ball in there. Kasten plays Pioneer tomorrow. Ground ball to third. Reinerts throws out to retire the side. Nice job by Huffman. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of an inning and a half, Wabash leads Rochester one to nothing, and you're watching our TC TV four. Back here at Bob Copeland after an inning and a half, Wabash remains in front. One zero over the Zebras. Boy, it's a beautiful day. I can't yeah. get a better day for baseball than what's we got the, yeah, here. Yeah, what's that hot ball in the sky? Yeah, right. Yeah. One more thing about cast and baseball. They're 7-2. and two. They post Pioneer tomorrow. Then their last four conference games are against Culver and Triton. Right, two of the Culver's bottom one, dwellers. Culver's 1-8 and eight and Triton's 0-9. Yeah, and the Culver's one win is against Triton. Right, so... If you're the Comets, if you can win that, you've got a chance to go 12 and two. It's not mm -hmm. crazy to think that that's possible. Obviously, they're, they're taking. Obviously, Coach Molenkoff isn't thinking that way. We, we're in the media; we get to talk about it that way. But the schedule is kind of favorable for them moving forward after that big doubleheader sweep over North Judson. It'll be Cipher, Elliott, and Hunting due for the Zebras in the bottom of the second against Beaks. Well, I had some good trivia questions. Mr. Screeton isn't here today. I might just foist them on you. I've just worked too hard on this, Steve. This is <laughs> a labor of love. First pitch to Cypher. Cypher is a 300 hitter. He's 9 for 30 on the year. He has well, three I'm RBS. assuming uh, if it's trivia for Mr. Screeton, it's probably Cubs trivia. It's Cubs trivia and a little non-Cubs trivia. Okay. Pitches up and in. There's one Hall of Famer born on May 9th. Not a, cu not a Cub. Oh, boy. He played for the San Diego Padres from 1982 through 2001. He Accumulated 3,141 hits, and he won eight batting titles. I think you know this one, Steve. Uh, would it you, don't be, have to be a, you don't have to be a huge baseball fan to know this one. There's would it a, there's be a my uh, first name? Would he have the same first name as I do? No. No? No. Uh, and he, uh, he played point guard on the basketball team at San Diego State. Strike called, 3-1. and one. He, Terry? He, his brother played in the big leagues, and his son played in the big leagues. He was the baseball coach at San Diego State. Strike. He did, he did some broadcasting, too. There's a statue of him outside the ballpark in San Diego. Come on, Steve. Come on, Steve. Was it Tony? Got him swinging. Cypher is the first out in the bottom of the second. He was the right fielder for the Padres for 20 years. Well, Mr. Arini helped me there. Was it Tony Gwynn? Tony Gwynn. All right. Tony Gwynn Sr. All right. The late, great Tony Gwynn. Yeah. That'll bring up Evan Elliott. Sadly, we lost Tony Gwynn in 2014. He was only 54. Oh, 
Swing and a miss, 0-2 the count. Evan Elliott comes in hitting 260. He is 13 for 50 on the year. One homer and eight RBIs. And that batting average has been climbing upward for Evan of late. Line drive foul. Cubs birthdays. Today is his 30th birthday. He was a relief pitcher for the Cubs from 2017 through 2021. <laughs> He's now in the uh, Triple A, I think, in the farm system of the Philadelphia Phillies. He was a pretty good pitcher. I mean, he was a talented guy, didn't kind of inconsistent. Pitched for the Cubs up until last year. He was a very highly thought of football player. The Cubs, the one-two, high two and two to Elliott. All right, you he, got me on that He one. had a football scholarship to North Carolina, but the Cubs drafted him and gave him a nice signing bonus, and he went up playing baseball. Got him swinging on a curve. Strikeout number two for Beeks. Uh, that would be Dylan Maples. Today is Dylan Maples' his 30th birthday. Hmm. Speaking of 30-year-olds, some sad news out of Michigan State. Adrian Payne, just 30 years old. I didn't hear yeah, what happened there. He passed hor- away. Yeah, horrible. He was shot to death. He was shot. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. Um, played, I think, four years in the NBA. Was a first-round draft pick of the Atlanta Hawks. Strike one and one. I, I, I always... I, 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 I always used him as kind of an example of how good of a coach Tom Izzo is. That if he had gone just about anywhere else, would he have been a first round NBA draft pick? Strike called, one and two, the count to Luke Hunting. I just thought he was a great guy. Yeah. Round ball to second. And throw to first is in time by Brooks, and that retires the side. One, two, three, down go the Zebras. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left, and at the end of two innings, Wabash leads Rochester one to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV4. All right, moving into the top of the third, still remains Wabash one, Rochester zero after two innings here at uh, beautiful Bob Copeland Field. I mean, it is just... This is the day that we've been waiting on, Val. It has to be the last broadcast that we're going to be doing here at Bob Copeland Field, but I guess we can at least say that we had one good day <laughs> here to broadcast Rochester baseball. Mm-hmm. TRC softball standings while we're at it. North Miami is 4-0. Tippecanoe Valley is 4-1, but their only loss was to North Miami. McConaughey is 4-1. Their only loss was to North Miami. Southwood is 3-1. Peru is three and two. Manchester's two and two. Rochester's two and three. Northfield's one and three, and both Whitco and Wabash are zero oh and five. Of course, the Lady Apaches are playing Rochester at Fansler as we speak. Be over at Fansler on Wednesday for uh, the Zebras hosting the McConaughey Braves in the conference yeah. softball action. First pitch to Andrew Dillon is outside. Yep. Will you be there, or are you going to the conclusion of the TRC track meet? Uh, I'll be there with you and Fansler on Wednesday. Okay. Brown ball, right side. Hunting, bobbles. Huffman's there, and he did get him. Good hustle by Huffman. He had to get there quickly, and Hunting was able to bobble it, but Huff, Huffman was there, so he was able to make the play. Tarek McLaughlin is hitting 452, Mr. Rini. So one up, one down here in the third, and that'll bring up Jason Tate, the left fielder. Tate is one for one with a single. Strike call. Pop 
popped up. Foul. Chasing is hunting, but he can't get there. Hoosier North softball standings. Caston and Winnemac are both 4-0 and Pioneers 3-0. So a lot to be determined there. As we mentioned, Winnemac. Good pitch. Boy, that, that fastball seemed to have extra zip from Huffman. He's throwing as hard as he, as I remember seeing him pitch. Two up, two down. Tate now one for two on the day. Strikeout number two. Going to find out a lot about that uh, Hoosier North Conference softball tonight, and then next Tuesday is the big one with Caston and Pioneer. Yep. Haven't seen a pole. Softball pole is not out yet. He's usually out by this time of day. Mm -hmm. But by Monday. Swing and a miss by Beeks. Beeks uh, reached on a fielder's choice his first time up. Cast in softball beat Knox 12 to nothing in five innings on Saturday. Hit by a pitch. Took a breaking ball off the shoulder. All right, Val. Where does that come into play? Didn't... Uh didn't even attempt to move. I thought baseball, that was more of an emphasis on that to get out of the way. Is that not not the case? Uh, it really has to be kind of blatant where you're almost you're leaning into leaning it. Leaning into it, yeah. Okay. okay. I, I, let him bring up center fielder Justin Booth. Booth fouled to the catcher his first time. Let's see if so. Ice is now <laughs> in as a courtesy runner, even though... And the ball slips out of Cypher's hand, but Ice is not moving anywhere. one -oh. Low. Throw over, runner back. Foul ball. Both of these teams are kind of wondering what would have happened had we had a season in 2020. Both of them had good ball clubs coming back that year. Mm -hmm. Wabash won the sectional in 2019. Foul ball, 2-2. Two two. Yeah, that 2019 sectional it kind of was a little bit of an upset. You know, Rochester just seemed like they were kind of the favorite going into it, and Wabash knocked them off. Yeah, beat them eight to four, and that I think they, I think they drew each other in the sectional that year, won eight to four. I think the zebras were up like four to nothing or four to one. Yeah, Wabash yeah. Kind of just kept pecking away and wound up winning that. Hit him in the head. Ooh, right off. Yeah. yeah. Breaking ball. So back to back hit by pitches to Beeks and Booth. First and second with two outs for Keaton Fields. That was kind of odd. I mean, you don't normally see it go kind of right off the top of the head like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, So with two outs here, the Apaches have two on. Field struck out looking his first time up. I think he took a fastball for the third strike. Let's see if he's looking fastball here, and he gets one, and he fouls it off. Can you look at this Wabash lineup? I mean, they're hitting 273. That's all right, but just there's no easy outs either. Ground ball, shortstop. McLaughlin's throw from the hole in time to hunting. Boy, Tarek's arm is not only strong, but it's accurate as well. For Wabash in the top of the third, no runs, no hits, no errors, two left. At the end of two and a half innings. Wabash leads Rochester one to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV4. Back here, Bob Copeland moving into the bottom of the third. The score is the same as it was after a half inning, Val. one nothing. Wabash. The uh, mm -hmm. 
Patchy's got two runners with uh, two base or two hit by uh, pitches in the uh, with two outs in the top of the third, but not able to uh, get any of those runs home. So Rochester holding their own here and need to get those bats going. They've been uh, getting a few, like we said, getting those runs across the plate's been the the trick. It'll be Huffman, Young, and Ferverta do up. It'll be interesting to see how Aaron handles this at bat. I mean, he's had a nice season at the plate, but he was he was going to be flexed out. Now he's batting due to the injury to Medina. Aaron is a 290 hitter. One homer, nine RBIs. Aaron is nine for 31 on the year. Foul ball. One and one. Ball two. Okay, the last Cubs birthday I'm going to mention is kind of an obscure one. <laughs> this is, you know, Eddie Collins. You know, people were looking at me funny after that one, so we're going to do another one today because I like... I like people looking funny at me. This is good. He was a shortstop of the Cubs from 1931 to 1938. Oh, jeez. Whoa, way up and in, and Huffman drills a leadoff walk. And then he came back to the Cubs for a second stint in 1946 and 47. He was known as a great defensive first baseman, was a shortstop. Really great defensive shortstop on three different World Series teams. The Cubs, remember, the Cubs won the pennant in 32, 35, and 38. And he was the shortstop on all three of those teams. They lost in the 32 World Series to the Yankees, in the 35 World Series to the Tigers, and the 38 World Series to the Yankees. And this guy was born on May, May 9, 1908. Passed away in 1997. That's ripped to center field. That is going to drop for a base hit. It's going to be a close play at third, and he's out. Oh, my gosh. And they throw to second, and they get Young as well. They get a double play out of all that. Well, that was a great sequence for the uh, Apaches, not so much for the Zebras. That was a heck of a throw by Justin Booth. That started it all. And that was in plenty of time to get the courtesy runner and then the throw back to second nailed Young. So that'll be for Verda with nobody on and two out. Called off. A foul. So that hit by Young was the Zebra's first hit of this game. When he winds up getting wiped off, wiped off the base pass. Popped up. Fair foul. Foul. The pitcher makes the call and the catch. Faverda fouls to the pitcher. No runs. One hit. No errors. Nobody left. At the end of three innings, Wabash leads Rochester one to nothing, and you're watching RTC. Come back four. here. That was a uh, strange sequence of events there, Val, at the end of the third inning. And the uh, play by Wabash ended up tagging out the uh, runner at third and then going back and getting the runner at second. Mm -hmm. Double play on two tags. That was. Yeah, whenever you get a base hit and a double play and <laughs> all in one weirdness. Yeah. It'll be Brooks learned and Smith do for Wabash here in the top of the fourth. Another going back to my previous birthday trivia question, another <laughs> thing that makes this guy interesting is he was shot by a crazed female fan 
And this incident supposedly inspired Bernard Malamud to write the book The, N- the Natural about. Obviously, The Natural is a novel. It's a mm-hmm. fiction, piece of fiction, but this incident kind of inspired him. Really? So who am I talking about? If you're, again, if you're a Cubs nerd, you might know who I'm talking about, but it's not easy. Yeah, I'm not that much of a Cubs yeah. nerd. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the correct answer is Billy Jurgis. Ah. Billy Jurgis. He was shot by a crazed fan, and that inspired the novel The Natural. Huh. First pitch to Jared Brooks is a strike. Brooks flew out to right his first time up. Oh, and two. You know, I've seen parts of that movie, mm-hmm. probably the whole thing, but I don't think I've ever been able to sit and watch the start to finish. Got him swinging with a breaking ball. You know, a lot of times teams make adjustments the second time through the order. I think Huffman's made the adjustment. Mm-hmm. He looks sharper. Now going to bring up first baseman Colton Learned. He doubled his first time up. Learned only a 214 hitter, but looked good in the batter's boxes last time. Puts this one into play. It's a worm killer. McLaughlin to first in time. I think Tarek knew that Learned wasn't the fastest guy on their team, and had a little extra time to yeah, didn't rush get himself. set. Yep. Two up, two down. A little bring up the DH, Blake Smith. Smith is a senior. Flew out to Faverda and left back in the second inning. Pitch is high and outside. Fastball high. Strike. One on one. Did he offer? They're saying no. Nope. Two and one. Ball three. Three and one. Uh, Blake Smith. I had three and one before that. They're saying you had two and one. He thought three and one. You thought two and one. The ump says two and one. So we're going with what the ump says here. They actually appealed the the, fir- the base umpire's clicker, and he said, "No, I got three and one also." So it's three and one. Three, three and one. And now Mr. Holly's out to talk to the home plate umpire. Honestly, I had three and one when you said two and one, but I always go with what you say because usually it's right. So. So that's what we're going with, I guess. Three and one now. And after all that, it's a base on balls for Smith. That'll bring up Trevor Daughtry. Daughtry grounded to third his first time up. See if they run with Smith here with two outs. Your number nine hitter at the plate. Up and in. Or maybe you're th- or or maybe Coach Holly's thinking, well, we'll not run. Let Daughtry have an at bat here, and what's the worst that happens? Then we lead off the next inning with our leadoff hitter. Fall back to the netting. One and one.
strike. One and two. Fama. And Trevor Daughtry had a heck of a year on the basketball court. He is lightning quick and a really good shooter. And these teams will be in the same sectional the next two years. Yeah. And Daughtry is just a sophomore now. So that means Rochester will, could face him up to four times the next two years. One and two. That is a base hit in the left field. Nice job by Daughtry. Stayed back on the breaking ball. And line to base hit to left. First and second with two outs. Now to bring it up the catcher, Andrew Dillon. Good patience there by a young hitter. Getting on. Mm -hmm. and Again, here for the second inning in a row, they've got uh, two on with two out. Dillon has walked, and he's grounded first base to pitcher covering. Number seven coming in, courtesy for pitcher. Courtesy for the DH. Okay, sorry. That's a pinch. That's technically a pinch runner, right? Since it's for the DH, and it's not the flex player. I think if it was the flex player, you could do that, but it's not. So Andrew Dillon's batting with first and second, two outs. Grounder right side, off the glove of Hunting, knocked down by Zingle, keep it on the infield. And there's a runner who takes a big turnaround third, but will get back to the base. It's a, call that a base hit. But a nice job by Zink to keep it in on the infield, because if that ball sneaks into the outfield, a run probably scores. Yeah, definitely saved a run. Bases loaded, two outs, and Jason Tate is the batter. Tate has singled and struck out. Heck of an effort by both Hunting and Zink. First pitch is a strike. The runner, and that is, that's uh, Harner, who's the runner in the game right now for Wabash. He took a big turn and fell. He might have at least tried to score. Good breaking ball, 0-2. I think, didn't we have this kind of situation uh, at the in the sectional semifinal last year where the Apaches had the bases loaded and looked like they could uh, get a couple runs across? 0-2 and... Oh and pitch away to Tate. I believe Huffman was uh, pitching at that, uh, mm -hmm. at that point as well. I think well. so, yeah. yeah. See if uh, we can get this out here and yeah. Grayson Harner, that is the runner at third for Wabash right now. He was the guy who just tripped and fell. The one two. Got him swinging with a breaking ball. And they do get that out. That's big. Strikeout number four for Huffman. For Wabash in the top of the fourth. They score one on two hits. No errors. Three left. At the end of three and a half innings, Wabash lead or yeah, no runs, two hits, no errors, nobody no no runs, two hits, no errors, three left at the end of three and a half innings. Wabash leads Rochester one to nothing, and you're watching RTC T V four. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field and uh Val, you mentioned that uh big play at first knocking that ball down, keeping that runner off of uh you know, trying to score, and then uh Huffman gets the huge strikeout with the bases loaded and Keeps the score one nothing here after uh, three and a half. Yeah, that's just a great job by Huffman of kind of maintaining his composure yeah. there and just staying focused on the batter. That's uh, that was nice to see. So the Zebras have batted the minimum nine nine through three innings. They they have had three base runners on two walks and a single, but all three have been erased on the bases. One, yeah. Including that weird double play. So it'll be McLaughlin, Zink, and Reinhardt's due here.
So let's see what happens the second time through the order. McLaughlin came in hitting 452. One homer, 17 RBIs. He leads the team in RBIs even though he hits leadoff. He also leads the team in RBIs even though he also leads the team in walks with 13. He's got a, a good eye, but and that's ripped to center. Base hit. Booth plays it on one hop. Tanner Tarek now one for two, and that'll bring up Braden Zink. Zink walked his first time up, so let's see what's going to happen here. Do you have Tarek Steele? Do you have Zink Bunt? Do you have Zink take a pitch to allow Tarek to steal? I imagine Dylan has a really good iron because he's also their ace pitcher. Throw over is not in time. Or do you just have Braden swing away? Again, Braden does not normally hit second in the order. Popped up, shallow left. That's not an easy play. That's not an easy play at all. And Booth makes the catch. That wasn't an easy play at all. Fields went back and back, and his head was turned, and that was... That's one of those, if it drops, you wouldn't have been uh, too surprised on. It, it was, yeah. There was three guys, and it didn't look like any of them really had a good read on it. Right, and Booth was kind of playing back. He had to come in a ways. And even he was kind of in an awkward position when he made that catch. I mean, I don't think he was reading it real well. Mm -hmm. Tanner Reinerts was the batter. Tanner grounded into a 6-4-3 double play his first time up. Pitches a ball, throw to first, safe. That throw was a little better. Tarek might have been in trouble over there. Yeah. And I think part of it, too, is learn the first baseman. He was playing a little bit off the bag, giving kind of Tarek the idea of, hey, I'm not really holding you on when he actually was. I imagine that was a play called from the dugout by Coach Holly. I'm curious to know if that was. There goes the runner. Fly ball to center. Tarek back, back. He doesn't catch it. Up against the wall. McLaughlin to third. Reiners to second. That's a double. Second and third with one out. Booth went back, back. Might have gotten the glove on it, but he didn't have it. That missed being a home run by a couple feet. Yeah. Well, this is a uh, big break for uh, Rochester. See if they can take advantage of it with runners in scoring position. Cypher the batter. Curveball over the outside corner, 0-1. That was a good pitch by Beeks. Mm -hmm. There was nothing Cypher could have done, even if he had swung. Yeah, it probably wouldn't have ended well. Mm -hmm. Heater up and in. So breaking ball up and away, fastball up and in. Again, Beeks' velocity isn't overwhelming, but he's able to locate his pitches pretty well. Ground ball to third. They got McLaughlin in a rundown. On the ball is dropped by Dillon. Throw back to third. He makes a man miss. Throw back to second. Safe. Everybody's safe. <laughs> Fielder's choice. McLaughlin's out. He is out. So that is the second out of the inning. It was clear from here that McLaughlin wasn't tagged. Dylan dropped the throw, but it was kind of lying right next to him. He was able to pick it up. And, and now we're going to have Ethan Medina bat. He's pinch hitting for Evan Elliott.
first and second. Two out. First pitch by Beeks is outside. Courtesy runner over at first. Reinert's over at second. Strike. One and one. Bumford is the courtesy runner at first. Landon Bumford. Sneak in behind Reinerts. Go back. Fouled off. One and two. Medina. Hitting 367 on the year. Up as a pinch hitter. Foul ball. So McLaughlin let off the inning with a single. Zink flew out to center. Reinert's double to put runners at second and third. Cypher grounded into a fielder's choice where McLaughlin was called out for being out of the baseline. So he was out. Reinert's got back to second. Cypher reached first on that play. Base hit to right center. Rounding third is Reinert's. He's going to try. Here comes the throw. It'll go through. It's late. And they missed the cutoff, man. And Rochester and Olive Runners at second and third. Reinert scored from first on a head first dive. Bumford went from first to third. Medina's with an RBI single and he goes to second on the throw. What a big hit for Ethan Medina. Oh. Coming in cold and he comes up with a huge base hit. Coming in cold, and you know he wasn't feeling the best, and that was uh, that was big for the Zebras. Let's see if they can uh, take the lead here. First pitch to Hunting uh, results in a swing and a miss. <laughs> one and one to Hunting. Luke. Comes in hitting 250 on the year. He's 5 for 20. Playing first base today. Luke's guy has been playing all over the diamond. Whoa. Over his head. That was a really good job by the catcher to get that because that probably would have cost them a run. Yeah. Second and third, two outs. Foul ball. Got him swinging on a high fastball to retire the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the fourth, they scored one on three hits. No errors, two left. At the end of four innings, Rochester and Wabash are tied 1-1. You're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field. Moving into the fifth inning, Val, it was a... Eventful bottom of the fourth. The Zebras were able to get one, even things up at one, but you kind of thought maybe they could have got a couple more there. Yeah. Uh, the cipher play is kind of one where you're... And I'm still... So they said that Tarek was uh, out uh, of the... I disagree. I'm not sure about that at all. <sighs> I mean, you got I mean, I get it. You can't... You can't 
swerve way outside, but you also have to be able to avoid the tag. Right. And Tarek did that. We saw clearly from here that he was not tagged. Right. And that's the difference between first and second, two outs and bases loaded, one out. And that, you know, then then you really have a chance for a big inning, but instead mm -hmm. they get one. But just a nice job of focusing by Ethan Medina with a two-strike base hit. Yeah, coming in, like you said, cold and uh, coming up with a big hit. And Top of the fifth coming up. It'll be Beaks, Booth, and Fields due for the Apaches. Wabash has not scored since the top of the first, so let's see if the Zebras can hold them here again. Foul ball. Can Reiner get it? No. 0 and 1. Rochester went down 1 2 3 in the bottom of the second. That's the only 1 2 3 inning by either team in this game. So both teams have had kind of their chances, but. It's like, uh, in terms of just kind of putting together a rally, both teams, it's like they get one guy on base and then they can't get the next guy on. And then. Yeah, and it, that's what we've talked about with Rochester over the last four games. That's kind of been, you know, their their struggle is getting those guys crossed. Mm -hmm. I think Huffman kind of missed that uh, release point there a little bit. Yeah, you wonder sometimes if you get a spike caught on the mound there or a trip if it, if it's with the feet there, and he's kind of smoothing out the dirt there. Yeah. And I'm kind of wondering if that's if he didn't trip or get a cleat stuck in there. One and one the count to Beeks. Breaking ball just low. Beeks has grounded into a force out, and he's been hit by a pitch, so he's 0 for 1. Ball two. Top two teams in the TRC. The Zebras can win it. They'll move into a tie for first. Oh, a good pitch. I mean, Ritt in in his fist. And the throw by Reinerts is in time. I mean, that was in. That is the definition of in on the kitchen. I mean, that is having dinner at your parents' house. I mean, that is. <laughs> and saying, hi, I've come to get your son out. I mean, that was. That was in his Easter basket. Yeah. That was a nice play by Tanner over there, too. That was kind of a slow roller. Yeah. First pitch breaking ball to Booth is outside. You know, I I, I had heard that Tanner hadn't played much third base, and when I when I came in asked, I actually came, went up to Tanner and asked him about it. He goes, no, I played a lot of third base. Yeah. I said, And then I asked him that one game he played second base. He goes, no, I played a lot of second base, too. He's probably played a lot of everything, he's yeah. He's probably, probably, probably played a lot of everything that I, yeah. now that I think of it. He's, yeah. I'm maybe, sure if he, maybe not on the varsity level yet. Yeah, but, I'm yeah. sure if he needed him to play shortstop at an emergency, he could do that. Swing and a miss, 2-1. and one. That was a nice pitch by Huffman. That's another good pitch. Bobbled. Nice play by Reiner. It's kind of, he bobbled it, but in one motion, he kind of picked it out of midair and threw on the run. Two up, two down. That will bring up the sophomore shortstop, Keaton Fields. Fields has struck out looking and grounded to short. Huffman has walked two, he has hit two batters, and he struck out four. He has now hit three batters. I'm going to blame you on that one. <laughs> Just the mention of a hit batter. and <laughs> Your curse is running deep tonight. Well, he, he jammed Beaks, he jammed Booth. And I don't know, maybe he feels a lot. Well, maybe he's going to plunk me. Throw back to first, safe. He 
He has been pitching pretty tight. I mean, mm -hmm. it seems like everybody's been getting it up on their hands. I have Fields 9 for 12 in stolen bases on the air, so. Let's see if he's on the move here. Huffman seems to think so. Yeah, he's doing he's everything paying, he can. paying a lot of attention. Yep. Pitches outside, throw back, safe. That snap throw, and again, give the give the base runner thinking that you're maybe not holding him on, and then he whips it over there and hunting catches and tries to run him to the bag. Pitches outside, throw to second, safe. Stolen base for Keaton Fields. Runner at second with two outs. And the count is 2-0. I think so. Yeah. It's not what the board says. Yeah, it's not what the board says. You know, that was a really good job by uh, Tarek just to keep that ball in the infield. Yeah. Ground ball, bad hop, and it gets by Zink. In the right field. Here comes Fields. The throw is late. The run is in. The throw is to second. Got him. Out. Nice throw by Cypher. Run scores, though, doesn't it? The run does count. It's an RBI single for Jared Brooks, but he is thrown out two to six, trying to advance on the throw. And that retires the side. But that took a terrible hop. It took a hop, and Zink was right there, and it just flew over his head and went behind him. So in the top of the fifth, Wabash scores one run, one hit, no errors, nobody left. At the end of four and a half innings, Wabash leads Rochester 2-1, to one, and you're watching RTC TV. Welcome back. We move into the bottom of the fifth here, Bob Copeland Field. The Wabash Apaches get one run, first time they've scored since the top of the first vowel, and uh, regain the lead. They lead 2-1 here as we move into the bottom of the fifth. A lot of weird bounces and peculiar plays in this game. That was just, I mean, Zink was right there. It was hit pretty sharply. Uh, maybe hit the, kind of the, that cutout between the grass and the dirt. Yeah. And it just flew over Zink's head. It flew over his right shoulder. It'll be Huffman, Young, and Faverta due for the Zebras in the bottom of the fifth. Huffman walked his first time. Breaking ball inside. We got a mound visit we here by the coach well, after one pitch. Mm -hmm. So I was watching the Cubs Dodgers game last night for a minute and. They're they're doing some things with uh, micing players up and interviewing them during the games now, yeah. and uh, it's uh, trying to get things more interesting, I suppose. But they had uh, Turner, the way they Justin Turner, yeah, over a couple inning span there, they were talking to him. Line drive to left, base hit. Huffman takes a big turn. He's going to try for second. The throw, safe. The ball gets away, but Learned is backing up, and that's a good decision. Aaron yeah. Huffman now one for one. Yeah, he thought about it, probably thought the better of it, and stayed at second. I'm going to have a courtesy runner for him. That's Drew Bowers. That is Drew Bowers. I think that was Drew who ran the first time as well. How about number 10, Gavin Young? A good start here for the Zebras. Now we got... Uh, the second baseman's hurting. Yeah, be, uh, holding his shoulder. That would be Brooks. I don't know what happened there. I didn't, don't think he made contact with the... With He didn't make contact with Huffman. Just kind of a weird bounce. I don't know. Jared Brooks, he's a great wrestler. Jared's a senior. I think he made state wrestling as a junior. He had that great rivalry with Ethan Holloway of Rochester. I was going to say, I was, that, that name sounded very familiar. 
I don't even know. Is it, is it his eye? Maybe it's some, a lot of dirt got in his eye? or Looks like he's holding his neck. But, yeah. yeah. But again, he's a wrestler. He's tough. He's You don't be as good a wrestler as he is without being really tough. So. So one way or another, Gavin Young's job is to advance Bowers, whether that's by hitting a ground ball to the right side or laying down a bunt. That's the very least he has to do. Zebras trail it, 2-1, to one, bottom of the fifth. Oh, hit him. Wow. That's the second player we've seen get hit in the head today. Yeah, that made a plastic noise after uh, it hit him, so that hit him in the helmet. Yeah, it that did. didn't, yeah, that it didn't did. hit him in the shoulder. No. How bad seven, Unless he's got a plastic shoulder like uh, Cousin Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was his head, too, anyway. But. All right, now Faverda's up. Faverda fouled to the pitcher his first time. Now let's see. Ooh. Steps off, whirls. Whatever it was, Brooks looks like he's doing better now because he was over there to cover. Learned it not holding on, and now he's moving in. Daughtry kind of playing, not really playing in, kind of playing level with the bag at third. A ball, 0-1. So if Averta did square around, you certainly, again, you'd love to have Tarek to bat with runners at second and third. That would be a nice situation because Tarek leads the team in RBIs, and he's on deck. He thought this would be a good game, and it has been. Offers and misses, 0-2. Pitch was not a strike. Yeah, it looked like it was a little high, wasn't it? Colton, the 353 hitter coming into this game. But he's down on the count here, 0-2. Rip foul. Two. Throw to second safe. Again, you know, Bowers hasn't played a lot of our a lot of varsity baseball. He's probably thinking about the shortstop behind him. Shortstop's kind of dancing behind him. He can hear him, and then it's the second baseman who runs over and covers. But mm -hmm. Drew is paying attention. Oh and two. Ooh. Did that hit him? It did. It did. It wow, did. on an O2 pitch. Yeah, right up in his chest. Bases loaded, nobody out. Beeks has walked two. He has hit two batters. And he has struck out three. And Tarek McLaughlin is the batter. And now another mound discussion with Daughtry, the third baseman and the two battery members, Dylan and Beeks. Tarek has popped a short and singled. How does Wabash play the infield? They're going to play in here. I mean, this is a big inning. They're kind of, Coach Holly, really rolling the dice here. High and outside. Like, we've got to get out of this jam right now. Mm-hmm. It is a jam of all jams for the Apaches, right. though. He's going to ground ball, sneaks through the infield, and Rochester might get two runs and take the lead. Mm -hmm. Strike. Ooh. That was on the outside corner. Breaking ball high. Two and one. 
Ball three. Dylan had to jump out of his crouch to catch that one. Well, do you want one of your best hitters to take here? No. Swing away. If you like it, hit it hard somewhere. Strike two called. That was on the bottom part of the strike zone there, and Tarek knew it. Mm. Three and two. Liner caught by the shortstop. Throw, wild throw. He tried to throw to first. And everybody advances a base. Game is tied 2-2. Two -two. Bauer scores on the play on an E6. Young advances to third. Faverda. Yeah, Faverda advances to second. Second and third, one out. And the batter is Braden Zink. And the game is tied. Yeah, he Fields made a nice catch. He looked at third, then he looked at second, then he thought, I can get the guy at first. But his throw was wild. Some opportunity here for the Zebras to add to uh, their run total here with runners at second and third, only one out. Pitch is high. Now the the second baseman and shortstop are playing kind of back. So strike over the outside corner. Well, that was in the bottom of the zone. Yeah. Again, a, a ground ball to second base should bring home the go-ahead run here. Third baseman kind of playing even with the back. First base playing even with the bag. High. Ball three. Now, if you're Coach Good, do you think about giving Zink the take sign with Reinerts on, with first base open and Reinerts on deck? And Beek struggling with his control a little bit here. He swings away. It's a fly ball to right. It's hit pretty well. It is caught. Tagging up and coming in to score the go-ahead run is Gavin Young. Zebras take a 3-2 to two lead. On the play, Faverda advances to third. Sack fly for Braden Zink. Ashton Smith made the catch out in right field. But he had to backtrack on the ball. He couldn't get any weight into the throw. And they are going to appeal to second base. He did not leave early. Runner at third, two outs. Tanner Reinhardt is the batter. Now with the bat, number three, Tanner Reinhardt. So Rochester battles back after giving up a run in the top of the inning. Gets two here, and they have their first lead of the game. Beeks loses his hat. First pitch to Reinhardt is outside. Now let's see what kind of scouting report Wabash has on Reinerts. Because with first base open here, a walk maybe isn't the worst thing in the world that could ha you could have happen from Wabash's standpoint. From the Zebras, you'd love to Reinerts to get a juicy pitch to hit mm -hmm. here, especially now he's heading the count 2-0 and and just driving this run. Nothing close on the first two. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. three. I'd say he's uh, not going to give him anything. Is that a new catcher? Uh, 
is yeah. that is Ice. Yeah, Braden uh, Ice, E I S. He's the catcher, number sixteen. He hasn't been the catcher. Nope. Dylan is their catcher. Yeah. The Started the game. I don't see Dylan anywhere out there. Hmm. Wonder if he's hurting. He looks about the same size, so I didn't even really look at it. Strike. I was just going to say, if if you ever give a three zero green light, this would, that would have been the time to give it to Reinerts, especially with a runner at third. You can use that run. Three one. Foul ball. Corey Good will take some heck for that. There's a guy warming up in the Wabash bullpen, and that might be Dylan. Uh. He is their he leads their team in innings pitched. Three one. Or excuse me, three two. And that is foul, yeah, based on balls. So it was three oh. Beaks worked the count full, to get, but Reinhardt's walks. First and third, two outs, and the batter is Jake Cipher. And here comes Jack Holly to talk with the home plate umpire. And it'll be Dylan who's coming in. Yeah, that's an unusual situation. You don't see the with the guy who starts out as your catcher mm -hmm. coming in to be your pitcher, but you need a second catcher to to allow your pitcher, pitcher to warm up in the bullpen. Right. Well, that's just the uh, kind of observations that you give us that uh, I never would even have looked at the number because, I mean, he looks like the same same build right there. I just assumed it was the same catcher. Mm -hmm. So Beeks is done after four and two-thirds innings. And I believe Beeks is going to stay in the game and play first base. Learned is going to go to the bench. He's out. Uh, no, Learned is going to go back in. He's going to play. He's going to go to the outfield. Like he's going to be throwing maybe a little harder. Yeah. So, let's see if the uh, Zebras can make some adjustments here. They still have uh, runners at the corners with two outs here. As Dylan makes his way to the mound. And he's had a tremendous year in the mound. 5-0 and record, 1.85 ERA. Wow. 30 in the third innings, 28 hits, 20 runs, but only 8 of the 20 runs are earned. 12 walks, 40 Ks in 30 in the third innings. 12 walks, 40 Ks, in 30 and a third. Yeah. Wow. So it looks like Beeks is now playing first base. Beeks moves from pitcher to first base, learn it from first base to right field. Smith is out of the game. I th think that's what's going on here. First pitch from Dylan to Ice. Foul ball. Jake Cipher is, one for, is 0 for 2. He struck out and grounded into a, four, or grounded into a fielder's choice. And this is their second string catcher. Would you consider running with uh, Reinerts here? Test out the backup catcher's arm. Outside. One and one. Okay. 
One and one. Fly ball to center. Back to his left. Making the catch is Booth, and that retires the side. But a good inning for the Zebras. They scored two runs on one hit. One big error and two left. At the end of five innings, Rochester leads Wabash 3-2 to two when you're watching RTC TV 4. Moving into the sixth inning, and the Zebras lead for the first time in the game. Val, 3-2. to two. They got two in the bottom of the fifth after giving up one to the Apaches in the top of the fifth. And if they can hold here. Six outs to go. Yeah. This is a this is a huge game, not only for their confidence getting back into the uh, you know swing of things, but a huge conference game, and then also you know we're going to see this team in the uh, first game of the sectional as well. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of things going on here. I think as long as Aaron Huffman keeps getting outs, it's his game to finish. Yeah, I would agree. He hasn't really uh, shown any reason why they should uh, you know pull him out. With Medina probably not uh, able to go as far as a relief, I don't know who would you would you go to a Reinerts at the you know to kind of uh, close things would, out probably yeah. Reinerts pitched on Saturday, pitched to the seventh inning of that uh, Warsaw game, but mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine he'd be ready to go if he needed them. It'll be learned, uh, learned Smith and Daughtry, I believe. Smith is in the on-deck circle, so it'll be those three. Learned. Colt Learned not playing right field. He's one for two in the day with the double, and he's grounded to short. Timeout call. Pitch is low. Wabash is 5-0 and in the TRC, but their last four are on the road. At Rochester today. They're at Peru on Wednesday. That won't be easy. They are at North Miami on Monday. That won't be easy. And then at Whitco next Wednesday to close it out. Yeah. Zebras have home games today with Wabash and Wednesday with McConaughey, and then they're on the road next week at Peru on Monday and at North Miami on Wednesday. So North Miami's going to have a lot to say. North Miami's 3-2 and two in the conference, and they're probably thinking that they're not out of it either. They'll have, they might have to win out, but they're in it still. Well, yeah, and if, if Rochester gets this win tonight, that uh, really makes those Miami County teams lick their chops as mm -hmm. far as... Fly ball to right. Can Campbell get there? No. And it rolls deep. Learned is in at second. Lead off double. Then I'll bring up Blake Smith, the DH. Smith has flown out to left and walked. Do you bunt with your eight hitter to get to your nine hitter? Hmm. But Daughtry is not, maybe not your typical nine hitter. So let's see. Smith is their DH. He's in there because he can hit. Breaking ball in. Pitch is high. I, I don't think Zink would be the guy who would pitch in relief in this game. I... He pitched two winning through quite a few pitches against Warsaw the other day. So we talked about not really having a reason to pull Huffman. How how long do you go before you do have a reason to get him? Yeah. I mean, if you get another man on with no outs, is that time to start thinking? It's time to start thinking, yeah. Yeah. I would think, yeah. Two and one. Two and two. Well, that was a nice pitch. And that was, that was good hitting by a learn, too. I mean, they hit that ball to right field with authority like that. 
Two and two. Foul ball. Hunting will take a look, but it's out of play. Got him looking for the breaking ball. That is a monster out for Huffman. Smith saw a lot of heat, and then he dropped the curveball in there. Yeah. I think Trevor Daughtry is the batter. He has grounded to third and single. Breaking ball in there. All of a sudden, after going 2-0, uh, Huffman gets that strikeout. I mean, he's starting to – looks like maybe he's getting a little bit of a second win here. Yeah, and the thing is he can – it's like he's got a, a couple different kinds of curves. Liner to center, base hit. Learned was moving back to second. He made to make sure the liner went through. The throw is cut off by Hunting, so it'll be runners at first and third with one out. That will bring up the pitcher, Andrew Dillon. Dillon has... Walked, he's grounded to first, and he's reached on an infield single. He has one for two, he has scored a run. Let's see if Daughtry will be on the move here. And let's see if the Zebras throw through. Foul ball. Might hit the bat twice. Again, Wabash would love to get Daughtry in a scoring position here. He represents the go-ahead run. Rochester leads Wabash 3-2, to two, top of the sixth. Throw over. Pitch is high. Dillon has struck out 13 times in 49 at-bats this year. So he does strike out a little bit. Mm-hmm. But... Went more than a quarter of the time. There goes the runner. The throw is not made to either base. Yeah. Stolen base for Daughtry. Second and third with one out. I think that was... I don't think Jake was ever going to throw the ball to second base. Nobody was even covering. He was just looking to see if Learn got a little fanciful. Ball three. Now you got first base open, and Tate, who struck out his last two times, is on deck. Strike. Hmm. I was wondering if Aaron was maybe pitching around Dylan at that point. Yeah. He nipped the outside corner with that one. So now let's see how it. Oh, what's up? Three and two. I think breaking ball is my guess. Ripped in the right. That will drop for a base hit. Learn will score. Throws to the cutoff man. Hunting. It's an RBI single for Andrew Dillon, and this game is tied. Corey Good is out to the mound to talk. And I think there's going to be a pitching change, but who's coming in? To give Wabash credit, I mean, three pretty solid hits this inning. Mm -hmm. 
Who is pitching here? I don't know. <laughs> there's I, I three. Don't know. I can't tell you who's pitching. There's three options know. right there, it looks like, and I don't know who has the ball. Ethan? Going to give her a go, huh? It will be Medina. Ought to be young. Had to help him off mm -hmm. the field at the beginning of the game after he kind of rolled his ankle in the outfield, and now he's coming in to pitch in relief. Any uh, updates from softball? How the girls are doing over at Fenster? Nope. So we're here tonight. Uh, we're we're going to be off tomorrow. Uh, I'll be up at uh, Knox with the uh, track meet. Back on Wednesday over at Fansler for the Zebras taking on McConaughey and softball. Be down at Caston on Thursday. You get to see the Comets baseball team in action against the Cavaliers. And then uh, Saturday, be up at Argus for an opportunity to see the uh, Lady Dragons take on Caston mm -hmm. in softball. So, getting some variety in this week here on RTC TV4. First pitch from Medina to Jason Tate, throw over runner back. So Reinerts is still at third, McLaughlin at second, Zink at first, Hunting is still the Zink at second, Hunting still the first baseman. Swing and a miss. I believe that's Roberto Elliott and Campbell out there. I believe Huffman's out of the game completely. Throw over runner back. Tate is one for three. He singled in the first, struck out on the third, struck out on the fourth. Swing and a miss. Cypher fakes the throw, but Dylan steals it. So that takes the force play out of the equation. 0 oh 2. Come on. Let's change. We said they steal about five bags a game. They've stolen three in this game. Bunt, it's a fair ball, and the run will score. Hunting to Zink, but that's a squeeze bunt and an RBI for Jason Tate. Wabash takes a 4-3 lead. On the play, Dylan now at third. Beeks the batter. He's the first baseman. He's grounded into a four shot. He's been hit by a pitch, and he's grounded to third. He's 0 for 2. In the dirt. Fly ball to center. That's hit well. That's hit really well. Up against the fence. 
They'll drive in a run. It's an RBI double for Jaden Beeks. Wabash leads 5-3. to three. That ball was hammered. Huffman's now playing center, but he had no chance of that. Pitch in the dirt to Booth, 1-0. and That one in the dirt. Coach Holly probably likes where he's sitting at this point. Up by two, and he's got his ace on the mound to try to get six outs. Foul back to the net, two and one. So I believe, is that Elliott back in right field? I think so. Campbell started the game out in right. Looks like a breaking ball inside, ball three. Booth has fouled to the catcher. He's been hit by a pitch, and he's grounded to third. Base on balls. First and second with two outs. I'm going to bring up Keaton Fields at the shortstop. Fields is struck out looking. He's grounded to short, and he has been hit by a pitch. 0 for 2, but he has scored a run. Throw back to second. Beeks is back. Strike. Okay, fastball over the inside corner. Strike. When we talk about seven, eight, nine in the batting order, whether it's softball or baseball, we talk about seven, eight, nine in the batting order. And if you get production from those guys, if they get on base, it sets, usually sets things up for a big inning. Their seven hitter learned started the inning with a double. Did he go? Did he go? He did not go. The ump is in the uh, second base position there, so really hard to get that call. I think he's going to go with the home plate call pretty much 90% mm -hmm. of the time there, isn't he? One and two. Foul ball. Yeah, their number seven hitter was learned. He got a double. Their number nine hitter, Daughtry, he got a single. And their, their, their seven, eight, nine hitters combined have been on base five times in this game. The one, two. Got him looking. And that retired the side. For Wabash in the top of the sixth, they score three on four hits. No errors and two left. At the end of five and a half innings, Wabash leads Rochester five to three, and you're watching RTC TV four. Back here in Bob Copeland Field, moving into the bottom of the sixth, the Zebras find themselves in a two-run hole. 
giving up three runs in the top of the six vowel and they're running out of time now to, to be down the largest uh, deficit they've faced this game so far. It'll be Medina. Hunting and Huffman due for the Zebras here in the bottom of the sixth against Dillon. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if you'd say Dylan has just amazing velocity out on the mound, but he's probably faster than anybody the Zebras have seen, at least in a conference game, in about two weeks. Yeah. Well yeah, especially when you, you factor in what you saw from Northfield and Southwood. I mean, yeah, definite. Uh, and he, Manchester, the Hall kid, pitched a terrific game. I wouldn't call him a power pitcher. He was. Mm. Medina had a pinch hit RBI single back in the fourth. He's one for one. He puts this one into play. Right to Brooks. He throws to Beeks. One up, one down. That will bring up Luke Hunting. Hunting is grounded to second, and he struck out. He's 0 for 2. Grounder. Off the glove of the third baseman, Daughtry. Over to the shortstop, and the throw not in time. We'll call that an infield hit. Ticked off the glove of the third baseman, Daughtry. It went over to Fields at short, who threw from the hole, but his throw was too late. Runner at first with one out for Aaron Huffman. Huffman has walked and doubled. He's one for one. He's now playing center field. Shows bunt. He gets it down, but it's foul. This is their third catcher of the game. That is Smith. Blake Smith started the game at DH. He is now their catcher. <laughs> Daughtry at third. Fields at short. Brooks at second. Beeks at first. Battery of Dillon and Smith. And Dylan, that, that was kind of his A move right there. But Hunting able to get back. Tate, Booth, and Learned in the outfield from left to right. Breaking ball, low and away. Throw back to first. Wild throw, it gets away. Hunting is not going to try. And I want to put that one in the back of your mind. This is, again, their third catcher of the game. That wasn't a pretty looking throw. Mm -mm. Just saying. No. You know, when your best pitcher is also your best catcher, you're going to suffer in one of the areas. One on one. So we're going to miss. Yeah, I haven't really found a way that you can do both at the same time yet. Yeah. One, two. Comebacker. Throw to second. Out. Throw to first. Safe. Only a force out. Good hard slide by Hunting. Fielder's choice. One, six. Two out. Is that Huffman in there still running? I guess it is. You can't courtesy run from him anymore because he's not mm -hmm. pitching anymore. Fouled back to the net by Gavin Young. Gavin has singled, and he's been hit by a pitch. He's one for one. He has scored a run. And Zebra scored two in the bottom of the fifth to go up 3-2, but Wabash came right back with three here in the top of the, in the, top of the sixth to go up 5-3. Line drive to center by Young, base hit. You know, Gavin Young, his kind of coming out party was in that sectional last year. 
I think he had 500 in the sectional as a freshman after basically not batting in the varsity all year. Yeah. He had some big hits in the, against these Apaches, as I recall, and then had a couple more big hits in the sectional final against Whitco. First and second, two out. Colton Favert is the batter. Let's see if they can do something with it here. Tying run on base. Pitch is high. Wabash is a team that they'll have both the shortstop and the second baseman kind of jockeying behind the right. the runner at base runner at second. Sometimes, you know, they're both kind of juking and moving, and they want the base runner to have a lot of things going through his head. Ground ball, third base, Daughtry steps on the bag. That's a force out, and that retires the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the sixth, no runs. Two hits. No errors, two left. At the end of six, Wabash leads Rochester 5-3. to three. You're watching RTC TV 4. Back here, Bob Copeland moving into the seventh, and it's the Wabash Apaches leading 5-3. Val, it looked like maybe... Rochester might get something. They had two on uh, in scoring position with, or uh, not, they one in scoring position first and second with two outs. Thought maybe they might be able to get something and then the ground out to third, and here we are. We know we talked about Dylan being kind of a big time strikeout pitcher. He has faced six batters so far, and he hasn't struck out anybody. Right. So, the Z, again, it's, it's not a lack of contact. That's really not been the problem in this little slump of late. Mm hmm. It's just not maybe not enough hard contact, but uh, or it seems like the hard contact they do get goes right to the third baseman. Yeah, and he just takes yeah. two steps and tags the base. Yeah, and you think yeah you think of that line drive that Tarek hit. I mean, he hit the ball right on the nose with the bases loaded, but it was right at the shortstop. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it'll be Brooks, Learned, and Smith, two for Wabash here in the top of the seventh against Medina. And again, if you can put up a zero here, you get the top of the order due up to start the bottom of the seventh. Yeah. Zebras beat Wabash twice last year. Beat him in TRC play, beat him in the sectional. And both of those games were played at Chris Rood Field. Yeah. One and one the count to Brooks. Brooks is one for three. He has flown out to right. He has struck out. And he had an RBI single back in the fifth. He's thrown out trying to advance to second on the throw home. Medina loses his hat again. You cannot accuse Ethan Medina of having a big head because <laughs> his hat keeps falling off. Strike. Well, it wouldn't be a Ethan Medina pitching appearance without the hat hitting the ground. Would right, it? exactly. Two and two the count. Got him. Strikeout number two for Medina. And that will bring up right fielder Colton Learned. Learn doubled and scored last inning. He's two for three with two doubles. Let's see if the Zebras have learned their lesson on how to pitch to this guy. <laughs> that went over well. <laughs> learned had not had an extra base hit all season. Up until this game, and he's got two doubles. Wow. And he's ahead in the count here, 2 and 0. Ball three. John Glenn beat New Prairie today, 9 to 5. They're 17 and 1. And they will be here on Friday. They're ranked number 10 in Class 3A. Strike. Wabash got some votes in the 2A poll this week. Didn't they? And they're among the others receiving votes. So not in the top 10, but they got, they got, they're getting some recognition. K 
Carroll is ranked number one. Carroll is 15 and 0. Base on balls for learned. Second walk. By Medina, and that'll bring up the catcher, Blake Smith. Smith has flown out to left. He's walked, and he struck out looking. 0 for 2. I know I saw John Glenn leads uh, the state in several categories. I think runs run scored or something, and then they had a player that was uh, leading the state in uh, doubles or um, extra base hits, maybe. Yeah. So they're going to be uh, they're going to be a challenge here on Friday for the zebras. John Nadolny is the baseball coach at John Glenn. He is outstanding. He's won over 500 games in his career. He was the baseball coach, I think, at South Bend Riley for a long time. Moved okay. over to Glenn. Okay. I know when Coach Hooker was around, he he put Coach Nadolny among the top of, of his list of coaches that he respected. Grounder, third base. Reinert's throw to first in time. Smith is out. Learn moves to second. Runner at second with two outs for Trevor Daughtry. Daughtry's two for three. Yeah. Like you said, nothing like having your number number nine hitter coming in and going two for three. Yeah. Chokes up on the bat a little bit, flares it out to right, and that's going to be a foul ball. Oh and one. It's a bunt. Medina just to get him, and that retires the side. For Wabash in the top of the seventh, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left at the end of six and a half. Wabash leads Rochester five to three. You're watching RTC TV four. We're back here and uh, all right. Mr. Reney wants to see that one again. So let's uh, let's go back here. Let's go to replay. We'll see that one again. Okay. All right. Here you go. We're gonna replay that. It was close. It's bottom of the seventh. The bottom of the seventh, yeah. Five to three here at uh, Bob Copeland. It'll be McLaughlin, Zink, and Reinhardt's due for the Zebras here against Dillon. Softball final. McConaughey has defeated Tippecanoe Valley five to two. That's Valley's second conference loss. Oh, wow. Five to McConaughey. Yeah. They, they, McConaughey will travel to Rochester on Wednesday. Called off by Tarek. Tarek is one for three. He's popped to short, singled, and lined to short. That was that we when he lined to short in the fifth, that was that weird play. He lined out, but the shortstop threw wildly to first to try to double off the runner, and the Rochester wound up scoring a run on the play. Ball one. The, uh, the first opportunity for the Rochester fans to see uh, Booman from uh, McConaughey, the young freshman yeah. pitcher. I mean, we, yeah. we saw her down at Caston. She's, she's good. Yeah. One and one. Fly ball, center field, Booth. Makes the catch. Nice pitch by Dylan. Jammed him. I don't know if that was like a cutter or something. Terry hit it straight up in the air. That'll bring up Braden Zink. Zink is 0 for 1. He's walked, flown out to center, and last time up hit a sacrifice fly. Strike. Zebras with seven hits in this game. 
in the dirt, one and one. And Wabash, if they win this game, they'll be undefeated in conference play, and everybody else will have at least two losses. They're, they will be right in the driver's seat. Yeah, for sure. Still got a lot of big games to go. Mm -hmm. but uh... Ground ball. Beaks to Dylan covering. Out. Nice job by Dylan getting over to cover. That's not the easiest of plays, but that's, what, that's why you have practice. So two up, two down, and that'll bring up Tanner Reinerts. Tanner's grounded into a double play. He's doubled, and he's walked. One for two. He has scored a run. It had doubled a deep center field his last time up. Outside. Usually nobody on and two out. You, With a guy like Reinerts up, you say, hey, swing for the fences, maybe try and park one, but with Rochester down by two, his job is to get on base, period. Ground ball. Dylan handles it. A lot of spin, but he throws to first, and he got him. And the ball game is over. And Wabash wins it 5-3. to three. Apaches celebrate out near the mound. They know that this was a big win. They remember who knocked them out of sectionals last year, and they are pumped. Yep. Well, this this has a, a lot of meaning to it, like we talked about in the pregame, Val. Obviously, uh, you know, with Wabash now going to six and zero in the conference, they uh, they are in the driver's seat, and uh, you know, everybody else behind them now has at least two losses. Mm-hmm. They got just. I mean, just a great job of hitting there in the top of the sixth inning. Yeah. I mean, the Zebras had come back to take the lead. They had come back to take the momentum. And just some really nice at-bats against Huffman. And then Medina. And the big sacrifice, big squeeze bunt by Jason Tate drove in the winning run. And then Beeks got them some insurance with a double to straightaway center. But uh, this is the first meeting between these teams. It will not be the last. 